All right, we left off looking at dictionaries. Now we're going to get a little bit more um, involved with them. So let's look at what we were do working with earlier. We had optionals being returned out of our dictionary. And again, we didn't specify the question mark like we did here or anything like that. It's just the nature of how the dictionaries work. And then we had to unwrap here to get rid of the optional syntax. So let's look at a little bit more simple dictionaries. We're going to start with the var. We're going to do aisles. And this is going to be aisle two, for example. It's going to be the freezer aisle. Aisle five will have milk or maybe dairy would be another term we could put there. So in this case, we're going to print, let's say aisle two. We'll do our colon and then we're going to have aisle and in this case, we're going to pull out a two. So because our key is actually a two and then we pull out the value, which is freezer. So it's key colon value. All right, so we dropped in an integer and we still got this optional out on this string here. Then up here, we saw we were going for apples. It pulled out an integer. It still became an optional. So no matter which way you go, you're working with that optional. And I am going to force unwrap because we know we do have a value. So we're safe to force unwrap. And we get the kind of the output that we're actually looking for on that, the friendlier output. It doesn't have that optional syntax in it. All right, so we're going to add some more items to our inventory. And we want inventory. This case, we're going to add bread. So I'm going to do this, and it's going to be 30 units. So what I've done here is created a key, and now I am assigning a value to the key. All right, and I want to print the total count of our inventory. So if we look, well, we can't look in the console. I think there's four items total. We can see that over here. We have four. So if this goes right, we should have five because we added this, uh, these units of bread. So let's see, inventory is going to be count. And we're going to have inventory. And I really just want to get... Um, what are the keys? Because that's the food group items. So I'm going to do keys and then count and close it off. And you can see here now we have our five. We can clearly see we've increased the number of items inside of here. And then what I'm going to do next, let's say we have inventory. Let's see, I want to be. And this is going to be apples equals, and I'm going to do 15 apples. So up here we have 75, and now we're going to have 15. Down here I can say number of apples remaining, and in this case, I'm going to do this, and we'll have inventory. So I'm going to pull the value of apples out, so we'll have this. I'm going to want to force unwrap, and then down here we have 15, number of apples remaining, 15, which is exactly what we were after. All right, so you may have noticed when we're going after these keys, we're always typing them in again. That can be error prone if you have a lot of them. So what we want is some kind of centralized reference that we can use for this. The way to do it is with enums, actually or it is one way. So we're going to do enum, we're going to declare these, we're going to have, let's do a lowercase i inventory keys. It's going to be a type of string for this enum, and I'll create a body for it. All right, because we do want strings ultimately out of our enums, so the way this is going to work is case bread. It's going to be an enum for bread, so I'm going to do this. I'll do case Apples, we'll have apples. All right, let's see how to use that. So notice here, there's no commas, just each one is a case. And I am going to print inventory keys dot apples. 
And down here we should get that output. Here it is. So we have apples. This keeps sliding down for some reason. And then next I'm going to access an item inside of inventory. All right, so we know we need this kind of syntax here with the brackets. I'm going to do inventory, keys, and I'll do apples, and going to just tab out of that. Now notice we're getting this error. If I click on it, ambiguous reference to member subscript. So what's happening is that this is an enum, although it is string because we can assign these string values, right here we're actually referencing this. This right here, not the value over here, the string, we're referencing this, which is part of this enum structure. So to use it as a string in this particular case is not really going to work. But it's not far removed from what we're actually wanting to do. It's very simple to get the string. So all we have to do is dot raw value. We get our string. We get our optional. We're going to change that. So we're going to do a, a, a bang right there because we know there is a value. Now we're referencing values inside of our dictionary without having to type in the entire string each time. We can just reference off of this enum uh, using these inventory keys. Every single enum that we add is just going to appear when we click dot, and then we'll get apples, bananas, bread, whatever it might be, and we'll reference raw value, and of course, our bang to go ahead and remove the optional syntax. So we're going to keep working with these and do a little bit more manipulation on our inventory. So we'll have inventory keys and that is going to be apples raw value again we're not printing this out so we're just going to assign something to it right now apples has a 15 we've decreased it to 10 so this is working great for us here when we're assigning this new value so we can print now let's say number of apples remaining now and in here we can take what we used right here just paste it here and we should see our 10 there it is and then we're going to also do a total inventory count and in this case we'll have inventory keys count and that should print out is the last line, which is here. We have our five. And then if we want to remove apples completely, we can do this. So we're going to have inventory keys, apples. And what we're going to do is raw value because we're accessing this key and assign a nil. That wipes out apples, the key and the value. And so if we print, we have total inventory count, and then we're going to do inventory keys count. So we have our count we did up here, then we did the change, now we can see we have a difference in our count. So we went from five to four, and we removed apples. So what we're going to do next is moving to some looping with these arrays and these dictionaries because they work really well with those kinds of constructs.